Hi there, brothers and sisters, living stones. Great to be with you all. So we're coming to the end of this Jeremiah study and we may get through it today, I'm not sure. We'll see. So Jeremiah has an important role in helping us move away from the old covenant into the new covenant. And this is something that Jeremiah mentions. So we got to the point where all the artifacts of the temple had been taken to Babylon and some of the original artifacts from the temple of Solomon are not mentioned after its destruction which happened in 586 BC. So we presume that these artifacts are lost or um, hidden somewhere. Um, the second temple that was built lacked the Ark of the Covenant containing the tablets of stone and the Ark of the Covenant um, we, we've had movies about it haven't we but we don't know where it is some say it's buried um, by Jeremiah in Mount Nebo but that's um, extra biblical um, <clears throat> so it's not there and the, the Lord does say this in those days when your numbers have increased greatly in the land declares the Lord people will no longer say the ark of the covenant of the Lord it will never enter their minds or be remembered it will not be missed nor will another one be made The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. This is Jeremiah talking. Jeremiah 31, 31. So we praise God that the Lord has a new covenant for us. So it doesn't matter that the Ark of the Covenant is no longer there with the tablets of stone, the, the Ten Commandments written upon them. This is the covenant, says the Lord, that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds. I will put their law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So this is the big changeover that we're seeing. Our heart is the place where God's laws should reside. Um, the Ark of the Covenant housed the law, but now our hearts do. Our hearts house God's commands. And we begin to see the picture that the Lord is painting in the Old Testament. There, there, which was a shadow of the true reality which was to be revealed to us. Now, there are important lessons that we can learn from these shadows, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the tabernacle that Moses was instructed to build, and the temple which followed it. So the t temple replaced the tabernacle once the people were in the um, promised land. So we see that the tabernacle represents a much bigger tabernacle, um, heaven and earth. Now the tabernacle was made from tent, from this tent-like material. And we said last week that Jesus had gone behind the curtain, this veil that was in the holy place, in the Holy of Holies, and he, Jesus has gone behind that curtain, behind the veil, 
and we call it the ascension. Jesus went up and a cloud hid him from their sight. And we read this last week, Hebrews 9, 11. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. That is to say it is not part of this creation. Hebrews 9, 11, important verse. So the Lord is showing us a bigger picture here. Um, so let's look at the tabernacle that the children of Israel made, um, who was uh, instructed to, to, to be made by God. And we see here, um, here's a picture of the tabernacle. Now, can you see over here, this is the altar there where the animals were sacrificed. So as soon as you came into the temple, which is uh, the tabernacle, which is this area here, you walk in, first thing you see is the altar. And then you get this washing basin, it was called a lava there. And here we see the entrance into the holy place. And then a little bit further on in that area there, inside that holy place there was another place called the the holy of holies or the most holy place and the whole thing had a perimeter there you can see the perimeter the tent and we can think of this as 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 this creation that we're in the world so um here's a, a plan view of it so this is looking from a bird's eye view and the entrance is over here on the east and the first thing we see is the bronze altar there it is this is looking down from above and then we can come to the lava which is the way you would wash then we come into the most holy place there um, and in the most holy place are three items. So over here on the north side, we have the showbread, the table of showbread. And over here we have the menorah, which is the seven lights. And over here we have the incense, the altar of incense that was burned before the Lord. And here we have the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was and the two cherubim that watched over its models of two cherubim. So that, that is a plan view. It was, it's fairly simple, isn't it? And the altar of burnt offering, that's the um, main altar that you first come to, as you walk in was made of it was made of wood but it was covered with bronze um, and it was directly in front of the tabernacle as you can see now Christ was crucified and sacrificed in the world so we could think of this whole area here this whole area as the world Christ was sacrificed on the altar and that's the, the first thing that we need to sort, get sorted when we come to the Lord. It emphatically taught us that man could not approach God except as a uh, someone who was atoned for by blood, a sinner atoned for by blood. And, the, and then the bronze altar, the, the, sorry, the, the bronze lava of altar. Notice they were made of bronze. Anything outside the holy place in the holy of holies was, was uh, bronze. And the, the water symbolizes, of course, the, the cleansing that we receive, the baptism, um, and the, the, the washing with water of the word of God. Um, we are cleansed and we are baptized and make our way to the holy 
place. Now all the items in the holy place, which is, um, let me just get my cursor again. All the items in here are made of gold and the Ark of the Covenant was covered over with gold. Um, and these are bronze over here. So, um, inside the holy place, there was a table. It was, as we said, it had 12 loaves of bread on the showbread. And it represented the 12 tribes of Israel. So that was the, the showbread. And w w the priests, whoops, the priests were allowed to eat the bread, but only the priests. And they ate the bread on behalf of all the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, now this represents um, Jesus as the bread of life and also the word of God as the bread by which we are to live. Man does not live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I am the bread of life. Um, so um, Jesus, we, we say of Jesus. So there were 12 separate loaves in the Old Covenant um, because Israel could not become one body. There were 12 tribes. Each tribe re retained its own distinctiveness. But in the New Covenant... We have only one loaf of bread representing Christ's body at the Lord's table because we are all one body. Even though we are from thousands of tribes across the world, there is no um, Gentile or Jew in Christ. So that's the showbread, the table of showbread, which was in the holy place. Then there was the menorah, the, the lamps. And we read in Revelation that the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Do not hide your light under a bushel. Let your light shine, Jesus said. So there was light in there in the, in the holy place. And notice that the, the holy place um, it's shaped like a letter B, isn't it? There, can you see that? If if we if we stood it up on end there, you get the letter B, the capital letter B. If you imagine it standing up the other way, and B in Hebrew is Beth, uh, which is house, means house in Hebrew. And we know that this is the house of God here. So it, it, we get a good picture there of the um, house of God. And we are in God's house. We are of God's household. So we move, once we have washed in the, been covered in the blood, washed through the water, we move into the holy place. And in there, is the altar of incense just before the curtain it's placed just before <clears throat> it was considered part of the holy of holies hebrews tells us but it was placed just outside the curtain because it needed attending to twice a day um, whereas the most holy place was entered by entered by the high priest on the day of atonement annually so this altar of incense, let's just think about that for a moment because um, the, the Bible says in Revelation that the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding a golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. So we get a lovely picture there, this sweet-smelling incense rising in the holy place, in the tabernacle. And these are the true odours of our heart when we pray as God's children. 
So when we pray with a good heart, with a contrite and broken heart, it rises up to heaven. And, and it's a sweet odour. It's the heartfelt prayers of God's people. So when we pray, let's not do it in a rote, monotonous, going through the motions manner, but let us enter in and pray in the Spirit because those are the prayers that are a sweet odour in heaven. And that's a lovely picture there of the angels having the incense, golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. So that's the, the picture of the tabernacle. Our hearts' sincere prayers reach heaven above. We get the picture, don't we, of the man who prayed, Lord, thank you that I am not like him at the back. But the guy at the back, he couldn't lift his head. And yet it was the man at the back whose prayers were heard, sweet-smelling sacrifice. Moses placed the golden altar of the tent of meeting in front of the curtain, burned fragrant incense on it as the Lord commanded him. That's Exodus 40, 26 and 27. So now, do you remember John the Baptist's father, Zechariah? He was one of the priests that had to go into the holy place to attend to the incense because it was um, attended to twice a day. So, um, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, that's Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, in the New Testament now, <clears throat> standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Ha ha! So, this is in the temple, of course, now, not the tabernacle. The second temple that was built. So, when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. So it's fitting that the angel appeared on the right side of the altar of incense. Because now he says, Yes, we know you've been praying, Zechariah. And what had, he, what had he been praying for? Whatever it was, his prayer had been heard. He was praying earnestly from his heart in the spirit and he had risen up a sweet incense to god so the angel said um D do not be afraid your prayer has been heard so that that is a lesson for us isn't it how we ought to pray we pray with a broken and a contrite penitent heart and our prayers are heard now we get this picture in not only from the tabernacle but also in in the psalms in psalm 141 verse 2 david said may my prayer be set before you like incense may the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice So the Lord said to Moses in Exodus chapter 30, Take fragrant spices, gum, resin, onica, and galbanum. So we get gum, gum, resin, onica. I think that was taken from a mollusk that was in the Red Sea area. And galbanum, which is a, um, a, a gum resin you get from this plant, and pure frankincense. So the Lord said, get these items and get them all in equal amounts and make a fragrant blend of incense, the work of a perfumer. So we get gum, uh, onica, galbanum and frankincense. 
we remember that we said that about Christ, didn't we, last week? That he is the priest because it was the priest who burnt these fragrant incense um, with some of the coals that came from the, old, the bronze altar at the beginning of the tabernacle there. And it, they would blend these fragrant, lovely um, blends of perfume and incense um, together. So the Lord says they are to be the work of a perfumer. It is to be salted and pure and sacred. Grind some of it to powder and place it in front of the Ark of the Covenant of the Tent of Meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. So, oh, we can smell that lovely incense. Beautiful. Do not make any incense with this formula for yourselves. Consider it holy to the Lord. Whoever makes incense like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from their people. This is not just any old fragrance and don't co try to copy it and use it as pot in, potpourri in your house or anything like that. This is sacred to the Lord. So, some good lessons here because all those ingredients uh, signify prayer. So when we come before the Lord in prayer, heartfelt prayer we come with adoration we come with um, thanksgiving we come with confession we come with supplication for others and intercession so we have all these ingredients of prayer and this is what the Lord is teaching us here um, and the prayer is especially for God. Don't make any other prayers like that. Don't make any other incense like that just to be used normally. It's only to God. This is sacred to God. And this prayer is a special thing that the children of God are able to do and take part in. Remember um, Darius, the Persian, was coerced by his officials to say, okay, for the next month or so, you, uh, only p to you, most ho majest majestic Darius, uh, should prayers be made. Um, and no one else is to pray to any other god except you. And Darius said, yeah, okay. <laughs> and he went along with it. But Daniel knew this was prayers are sacred to God and he would only pray to the living God and he continued to do so and he got thrown into the lion's den for it but God protected him hallelujah okay so it's this prayer is sacred to God and it comes from our hearts so Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends the lamps and he must burn incense again when he lights the lamps at twilight. So incense will burn regularly before the Lord for the generations to come, morning and evening. Um, it's this constant flow of incense. And we, we, we know in the New Testament we were told to um, pray ceaselessly, constant prayer we always have that communion with the Lord so uh, this was to remind the Israelites that no descendant of that no one sorry except a descendant of Aaron should come and burn incense before the Lord or he would become like Korah and his followers. You remember what happened to Korah. The ground opened up and swallowed them. We did that last week. So it's only Aaron. Specifically the, the, who was chosen by God. Um, because m many are invited. But only a few are chosen. Many are invited but they don't accept the call. But those who do are chosen. Matthew twenty-two fourteen. So 
this is the picture that we get here. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, the bronze altar, God has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve God, his Father. So we are a kingdom of priests, so we, are, we can go into the holy place. And not only the holy place, but the most holy place, the holy of holies, for the curtain was torn in two. And we have access to the Lord. So during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. So here we go. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers, petitions, with fervent cries and tears. All those are the lovely ingredients of the incense. And we should take note of that because that is how we ought to pray. We sometimes pray with tears and petitions, fervent cries from our heart. So that's Hebrews 5 verse 7. Okay, so lots of pictures here from the tabernacle. Now the Holy of Holies was uh, 10 cubits by 10 cubits. Um, and the most holy place was um, 10 cubits wide by 20 cubits. When the temple was built, Solomon doubled the um, dimensions. So the, the holy of holies in the temple was 20 by 20. Um, but it's, it's the same pattern that the Lord told Moses to build, except the dimensions are doubled. So Christ goes behind the veil with his own blood, behind the veil, the ascension, um, and a cloud hid him from their sight. He's gone in behind the veil. And the disciples looked up, just like those would watch, the priest would watch, and so um, Hebrews 8 verse 1 says, Now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do not have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of God in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. So sorry, did I read that right? So now the main point of what we're saying is this. We do have... Sorry, did I say that wrong? We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of God. So we have a high priest who sat down at the right hand of God, the, of the majesty in heaven, who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle, set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being, not by Moses or Solomon. Um, that's Hebrews 8. So Hebrews 8 verse 5 they serve at a sanctuary that is a copy, that is the priests in the Old Testament, serve as a sanctuary, at a sanctuary that is a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain, Hebrews 8, 5. Uh, the next chapter, Hebrews 9, 25. For God did not, sorry, for Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. So there were the disciples looking up in, into heaven um, and Christ entered into the Holy of Holies where God resides in heaven. So all the believers, the believers on earth, are in the holy place. And we see that Christ entered the Holy of Holies with his own blood. So how do we know that the sacrifice that Jesus took his own blood into the Holy of Holies, the true Holy of Holies in heaven, how do we know? 
that it was effective and that it was accepted. Well, we know because 10 days after the ascension, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. Acts 2 verses 17 and 18. So that's how we know Christ's sacrifice was accepted because we have had the Holy Spirit poured out upon us and we we our hearts have been touched by God so Ephesians 1 13 and 14 says you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth the gospel of your salvation when you believed you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession um, to the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Praise the Lord. So, um, okay, drawing swiftly to a close then. So, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. So we too will enter into that place where Christ went. And many believers are already there. They're already with Christ. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we thank God that the sum of the family is in heaven Although some of us are still on earth. That's what Ephesians 3, 14 and 15 says. I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. So, uh, Revelation 13, verse 5 and 6 says, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blaspheme and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. So those whom the world consider dead and gone um, and are able to pour contempt on God good Christian teachers of the past will be one of the um, signs of malice that comes from the beast and his system casting um, aspersions on the great Christian teachers from the past because he will slander the name of not only God and his dwelling place, but those who live in heaven. Okay, so we've learned so much, haven't we, going through this Jeremiah series. He's taken us into the new covenant, and we praise God that we're able to learn. And I thought maybe as we move forward, it might be good for us to go into the book of Matthew and have a look, because that picks up from um, a lot of what we've been learning about the last kings of Israel, uh, Judah. So we praise God that we, we're able to continue studying his good word because it's important for us to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the incense that rises and we pray, oh God, that it may rise from our hearts, Lord. Lord, the golden bowls full of incense are the prayers of the saints. So, Lord, we pray that we will have that broken and contrite heart which in your sight is of great value. Lord, <clears throat> hear our prayer, we pray, oh God. 
And so we give you thanks, Lord, for all your goodness to us. Thank you for helping us to understand the scriptures and for grasping them. Lord, and may your Holy Spirit, who dwells within us, continue to bring to remembrance all those words that we have read, so that we may have revelation, wisdom and understanding. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. And Lord, I do pray you'll be with all those who are in need. Lord, I pray you'll be with Mabaso Kali, Lord, who's looking for work. Lord, be with um, Matt McGee, Lord. I pray that you'll touch him so that he will receive uh, virtue from the hand of God, healing virtue, Lord. And Lord, we pray for our brother Buta. Bless him as he works um, and provides employment for the, the local people. Help him, Lord Jesus, with his business, we pray. And Lord, uh, be with Brother Evans. He asked us to pray for him and the uh, community that he lives in, Lord. Bless Brother Evans. He blessed us on Sunday with the Word of God on the Zoom meeting. So we thank you for him, Lord. So we give you praise and we bless your holy name this day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. So um, on Sunday, we on Sunday evening, we've got Raymond speaking to us on the Zoom meeting. So Raymond always has something good and edify, edifying for us. Right. So um, Sunday morning, we've got to the the fourth discipleship lessons that we've been looking at. So um, that'll be Sunday morning with Jeannie and myself. Um, so the Lord's doing some great things among us. And we've got Jeannie's interviews as well, continuing and wrapping, unwrapping Bible College on Monday. And I believe it's Jeannie actually this Monday because uh, Jeannie went to Bible College too. So we've interviewed Jeannie to learn. Um, so it's good, isn't it, that people wanted to actually go and study the Word of God full time in, a, in an establishment that studies the Scriptures. So we praise God for everything He's doing among us. He's leading us and helping us walk through these dark days that we are in. So we give the Lord praise. So be blessed today in the name of Christ and let's make sure our prayers rise as incense to the Lord. Thanks for being with me today. God bless.